Hello and welcome to 360 Sports on Trust TV. I am Emmanuel Fashimi. It's actually a good one. Despite that loss uh, in their opening Group C game right there in Paris, 2024 Olympic Games, that's the women's football event. Uh, there are some positives from that particular game and we are happy that uh, the Super Falcons of Nigeria was able uh, to hold their own. It's a 1-0 loss, very a painful defeat. They gave all their all, they did everything. It was uh, the kind of game uh, a lot of people didn't expect to see from the Super Falcons, but they proved every critics run that yes they can hold their own when it comes to the big stage it is what it is uh, at that particular game right there in their group c opener and the paris 2024 olympics women's football hostilities will officially begin today we'll be looking at all of these uh, and many more on the show this uh, morning but uh, well, as we're talking about Paris, let's begin from this particular story coming in from uh, uh, one particular boxer, a Nigerian boxer himself. He's an Olympian. If you remember Rio 2016, uh, he was there, got to the quarterfinal stage of uh, uh, the Olympic Games in Rio de Janeiro, that is Brazil, in uh, uh, 2016. But at the end of the day, couldn't make it uh, to the podium finish, but uh, Efi Ajakba, an Olympian, advising um, Nigerian boxer, team Nigerian boxer, to go for gold uh, in order to prove every critics wrong. We've always been doing best. Our first medal in Olympic Games since inception, uh, since we started going to the uh, Olympic Games, that was in 1952. Our first medal came in from boxing, and uh, the last time we got a medal in boxing was uh, at the Atlanta 96 uh, Olympic Games. You remember Dokiwari, uh, Duncan Dokiwari, giving us that particular uh, medal in boxing. But uh, the good thing is that uh, our boxer, well, we have one. Uh, we, are, we were supposed to go with three boxers to the Paris Olympic Games, but we, unfortunately we lost Adams uh, Olalore to injury, and we have Ogun Shemilore and the other uh, boxer uh, going uh, to Paris Games. And that is why he's advising that they should all go out for boxing, and they should all go out for gold. And definitely, uh, we will see what uh, the boxer will definitely what the boxers uh, will do when event starts. So we'll be looking at that also. And uh, well, congratulations to all of the team Nigerian at least that will be representing us. We need to congratulate them first for making it to Paris Olympic Games. And uh, moving away from the boxing story, we'll be going to the big one that happened yesterday evening. Group C opener. That game was played in Bordeaux. But at the end of the day, at the end of 90 minutes, uh, the Brazilians uh, smite home with all three points. Uh, all hope is not gone. And um, for the Super Falcons, like I said from the beginning of the show, they have a lot of positives to take away from that game. We will be right by. Let's just enjoy some part of that game between the Nigerian ladies, that the Super Falcons of Nigeria, and the Brazilians uh, in Group C opener of the Paris Olympic Women's Football Event. And we'll be right back to talk on that uh, game. T1 is playing at this level for the first time, but alongside her, Tamiris of Corinthians in Sao Paulo. So the action underway in Group C as Nigeria meet. Come out here, and it's a point, I think. <laughs> yes, uh, that was some part of that game uh, right there in Bordeaux. Um, <laughs> the Super Falcons of Nigeria, uh, good one, good one. Uh, despite the loss, like I said, it was a positive game for the Super Falcons of Nigeria. And uh, we cannot take anything away from Coach Randy Waldrum setting up that team. The get played fantastic football. Rashida Tajib, everybody, every player yesterday evening, gave their hundred percent in that game but you know sometimes uh, the result doesn't just go your way joining me on the show this morning is wilfred shando um on three city sport wilfred welcome to uh, the program you, you you saw it all you saw part of that game and uh, a lot of persons are saying yes despite that defeat super falcons did their best well good morning mr fash I think um, it was for me. It was a long walk of uh, 
you know, e-lock and, uh, you know, un unwavering, uh, you know, uh, resilience, you know, the, the, the girls, they gave their all, they came out, you know, they gave good account of themselves, they, they gave the Brazilians a run for their money, but unfortunately, there was a little bit uh, loss of concentration, which actually cost us the game, but I think uh, with what they've done and what they've uh, been able to gather from the encounter, they should be able to, you know, take off from there, and uh, if you don't get it today, it does not mean that you won't get it tomorrow, so... It was for me, uh, uh, if there's any word to, to describe their performance, I would say I uh, su super proud. I was super proud of what yeah, they actually showcased. Okay, well, at least what they showcased, uh, proud of them. And uh, a long time, I know every Nigerian is proud of that team. But uh, after that um, matters goal that was ruled offside, and then in space of, it doesn't go up to a minute, the ball went back into the net. What really went wrong at our back line? Yes, I, you know, I, I made mention of a uh, little loss of concentration, you know, in this a, a team uh, full of, you know, fresh legs, you know, young additions into the team and uh, you can't expect a uh, hundred percent, uh, you know, you know, blending, understanding and acclimatization from the, from the new, you know, legs. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, the uh, Deborah building was actually one of the girls that, you know, did a very wonderful work, did a very wonderful work. Um, we had a... Uh, um, uh, Christiana Uche. Uh, Assista to Shola. Uh, if Assista to Shola had come in this game, would it have made any difference from what uh, we saw? Because I think every player did well, apart from up front. Uh, do you see uh, what uh, they actually did? If you look at the start on the screen right now, uh, ball possession, uh, it was. Um, um, 50-50% uh, percent of ball possession. Uh, look at the total number of attempts, 15 for uh, the Super Falcons, 11 for Brazilians, uh, and 5 on target for the Super Falcons, 6 on target for, that is short at goal for the Brazilians, and then 5 off target, 6 off target for the Brazilians, and then short, of, uh, short on target, short off target is 7 to 3. And then blocks, uh, block shots, a three for Super Falcons and two for the Brazilians. And for the free kick, it was 12, 13. Corners equal, 5-5. Five, five. And they're offside. They had six offside. Uh, just the way um, the defense was set up, keep them at bay. Keep them offside. And it worked perfectly well just for a little a bit of uh, uh, the lost concentration in a split of seconds after Mata's goal was ruled offside. And they got punished uh, for that. Uh, if you look at the start, I think uh, the, the statistics of this game between the Falcons and the Brazilians, to me, in my own opinion, is a balanced one. Exactly, and that's why I say that they gave a good account of themselves. It was, for me, it was a very, you know, wonderful display of character, resilience, hard work, dedication, a long, you know, stride of, uh, you know, uh, composure, you know, trying to, you know, push forward, trying to get the desired result. So, you could see from, uh, from the ball position, it, 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 you know, it says it all. Okay, from the ball possession that really says it all uh, for the Super Falcons of Nigeria. They still have another opportunity. This is just their first game uh, in Group C, and they will still have they still have another game against the Spanish ladies uh, come Sunday. But uh, it is what it is. They lost their first game to the Brazilian, but like I said, it is a positive one. They should take some positives from this game. And I know uh, our coach around the world run must have seen some of those lapses and then they will correct them before the next game against the world champions who also got uh, off on a better start in their group. 2-1 uh, against the Japanese ladies. If we can actually have the highlight of that game. But, uh, but for the Spaniard, 2-1 uh, against uh, the Japanese uh, ladies, former world champions, they themselves. They went ahead, the Japanese ladies went ahead. But uh, Bomanti, the ever Bomanti, the <laughs> Barcelona player, at least inspired a Spanish comeback. And it was 2-1 at the end of the day, getting all the three points also. The Spaniards, they, they are also the champions of the of the of the world, you know, uh, as well as the Brazilian, the Japanese. So, you know, move away from that story and uh, quickly uh, go straight to the sports ministry, where the sports minister, yes, is also giving thumbs up and then drawing positive from this game. Uh, he is actually saying, despite the loss, the Super Falcons. All hope is not gone. Coming in from the uh, sports minister himself, encouraging the ladies, even though you lost this game, we are solidly behind you. 
I think uh, the the ministry, the the body and the pioneer of the ministry, you know, they both have been a you know very good a father figure, you know, to the to all our sport departments, the the football, you know, the basketball, the other, you know sport related uh, you know department they've been there to encourage them you know giving them moral support uh, you know financial support and any support they, they desire to to do well in the uh, in the tournament so i think uh, coming from such a you know a very important figure you know to the to the game it should uh, give the girl a, a higher momentum to even do better and uh, you know go out against the Spaniard and and bring out what we all you know want Okay, um, from coming in from the sports minister, I think the ministry has actually, um, they've, they did all they can, not for Super Falcons alone, the entire team Nigeria that are going there. And uh, the positive from the minister to these guests right now, uh, with the number one sportsman, because he's the number one sportsman in the yeah, country, exactly. encouraging this guy, don't you think the, the, uh, Super Falcons should look in water? Yes, they have the backing of the minister and then the 200 million plus Nigerians. Yes, I made mention of that earlier, you know, uh, that that speech is actually coming uh, from a, an important figure personality into the game, which is the number one, you know, sport personality, the Minister of Sport, you know, that supersedes all the sports that, that, you know, actually the And also, you know, encouraging them is not, a, you know, as much as, you know, them believing in themselves because these girls, they, they all know what, you know, an Olympic, you know, uh, achievement means to their CVs, to their respective careers and uh, how far, it, you know, it could take their names and everything. So it is actually much more important to them to do whatever they are doing for themselves than, you know, even the encouragement coming from the Minister of Sport. Okay, even the encouragement coming in from the Minister of Sports, uh, uh, there is still hope despite defeat. That is what the Minister is telling the guests, don't give up. Uh, because uh, it, 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 there is a saying that when you fall, you just pick up the pieces and rise back again. The rising is what it is. It is not in the fall, but the rising. And the Super Falcons definitely, we are looking forward to them to as in to rise against Spain in their next uh, Group C uh, game. All right, let's quickly look, look at uh, the full results of the games that were played yesterday evening in the women's football event of the Paris 2024 Olympic Games. Uh, we had the men starting the hours on Thursday, and then we have the women uh, also uh, kicking off uh, football competition in Group A. Canada beat New Zealand 2-1, and then uh, France, the host country, had to do all the job against the Colombian ladies. 3 2, it ended in favor of the host country. And then in Group B, uh, both Germany trashed Australia. 3 0, Australia, they were, they were in our group uh, during the World Cup uh, 2023. And then United States also beating Zambia 3 0 in their own first game. Despite the Zambian ladies getting a red card in the first half of that game, they just managed three goals against uh, the Copa Queens of Zambia. And then in Group C, we have uh, our Spain, uh, that's where the group where we are beating Japan 2 1, and Nigeria lost to Brazil also 1 0 uh, in that uh, game. So, so the games that were played uh, yesterday in the women's football event of the Paris 2024 Olympic Games. We have another game, we have our second game, and the Super Falcons, we are solidly behind you. Go out and get the maximum three points. Who says the Super Falcons cannot beat the Spanish women? Yes, in football, anything can happen, and miracles do happen in football. Definitely, we might just see Super Falcons pulling off the miracle that the Super Eagles did in Atlanta 19. 96. All right, let's uh, leave the whole story of uh, France, Paris, uh, and move ahead on the show. This time around, we'll go straight to the continent of Africa. They we're talking about Calf Confederations Corp. Uh, Ekanimu Warriors ready for Dajad class. That is Aliu, the coach of uh, Aliu Zuberu, the coach of uh, Ekanimu Warriors, who are champions of the President Cup. 2024 they won the fa cup in nigeria the oldest competition in nigeria and now the coach is saying yes they are ready for this particular game uh, in the first round of uh, the qualifiers of the calf confederations cup um shando academy warriors actually took everyone by storm you know they took every they they they, they, they increased the the championship, the competition, you know, with full of surprises because I was privileged to witness most, most of the encounters, especially the ones that were played here in Abuja. And I could tell from the players, uh, you know, 
momentum, from their zeal, from their willingness to to achieve good things, to to you know booster their their personalities, their CVs. I don't think uh, you know there's anything too special, you know, for for them to be scared of, you know, going into the Confederation Corps because it's all about you know building from what you know they've had on ground already and uh, how far they've been able to go. And I think um, they, they are going to give a, they're going to give a very good fight in the, in the Confederation Cup. Okay, they are going to give a very good fighting in the Confederation Cup. This team has been out from the continent for a very long time. But going back there, Coach Alud Zuberu, a man who would understand what football is, uh, he has coached a lot of uh, Nigerian clubs uh, in the country. And uh, he said, yes, they will be battle ready uh, for this particular clash. They will be going through the qualifying stages. And then before we get to the group stages proper, the last time we had success in the CAF Confederations Cup uh, was in 2006 with uh, the defunct Sharks of Portaco. Then they were called Sharks of Portaco, but now it's Rivers United. They lost the final in 2006, but Ekanemu Warriors want to get it better and do us proud. All right, uh, but let's quickly talk some transfer on the show. A good one for this particular player. Fantastic Super Eagles defender. He has traveled far and wide. Now living the whole of Europe, going to America. That is Chido Zewe Awaziem, who left Boa Vista to join Cincinnati in America. He will join the likes of uh, Bafemi Martins, who played uh, in, in MLS. That is uh, in Major League Soccer uh, in America. A very big uh, one for Chido Zia Collins Awaziem and. Uh... Congratulations to him. You know, uh, it is good that most of these players understand that they've given what they, 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 they ought to give into the, into the game. You know, professionally wise, career wise, and then it's time for to look for you know how to be able to like live life after you know the game. So I think a move to the MLS is a good one. You know, financially wise, it's going to be a very good one for him. So it's for me, okay. it's, that's great. I was here moving for the money. You just have to collect your pension when time comes. Uh, instead of going to the Middle East, that is Saudi Arabia, he decided to go straight to America and then maybe get his own parting gift, his own pension uh, in the major soccer league. Still moving ahead uh, this morning, let's come uh, back to Europe. This time around, Manchester City. They want to get every best player on their book. Manchester City offer. Uh, uh, Tables offer for Leipzig midfielder Danny Olmo. Uh, Manchester City are trying to get every good player, like I said, on their books. And then the last one on the show this morning, the last transfer we'll look at is Aston Villa. Keep tab on Borussia Dortmund winger Karim Adeyemi. Fantastic player. We saw him in the final against Real Madrid all through the season in the Champions League. He was so good for Borussia Dortmund. Great lad indeed. Uh, I've watched him over a period of time and uh, in the finals, he's got a lot of qualities. And then uh, uh, Unai Emery is also a very good technician, so I'm sure there's something here. He must have seen in the guy, and uh, it's be a very good addition for the for the Villa for the Villa side. Okay, all right. That is where we'll be leaving it on the program this morning. In Karim Adeyemi and Aston Villa. Let's see how it goes because Aston Villa will be playing in the UEFA Champions League uh, come next season. So they want to get players to beef up their team. All right, that is the uh, size of the program this morning. Shando, thanks for joining me on uh, 360 Sports uh, this lovely morning. Uh, it's my pleasure, Mr. Fash, and it's always great, you know, finding myself around, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that is it on the program. I am Emmanuel Fashimi. Say thanks for watching.